Wow. What does it mean to be a farmer? You have to be thick-skinned, you have to be strong, you have to be sensitive, you have to be able to uh, read your environment, you have to become a meteorologist, you have to understand weather, you have to understand uh, hydrology with water, how to manage it, you have to learn economics, you have to learn how to manage land, manage a business. To be a farmer is the greatest job I could ever imagine to do. Farming is compassion, farming is integrity. Farming is trying to learn the real definition of sustainability. Farming is, is all-encompassing. I mean, we feed and clothe the world. So being able to look at my children and say, hey guys, those clothes you're wearing, yeah, that's cotton. Your grandpa started this farm, your great-grandpa started this farm by growing cotton. I love farming, I'm passionate about it. Uh, I grew up drawing tractors. I didn't, I didn't want to be an astronaut. I didn't want to be a fireman, I wanted to farm. I wanted to do what my grandpa did and my dad did, and uh, I get to play in the dirt all day, so I really can't complain about that. Well, I remember the first time I started to work and get paid for it, uh, my grandfather would pay me in $1 bills, and he would roll them up, and I always thought I was just making bank. And uh, I remember how hard it was, though. I would commit to start washing a tractor by hand, and I'd get not even halfway done with it, and I'd, I'd want to give up, and he'd say, no, you committed. And I said, yeah, but can you pay me for half of the job? So learning how to uh, follow through and finish what you do on the farm is definitely important. One of the first things that really came to my mind when I knew I was committed to farm was that I did not want to be the boss's son. I had to understand that, yes, I would hope to become a boss and manage the business, but at the same time, I didn't want them to look at me as somebody who had just walked into this and inherited this and would think he knew everything. So thankfully, my grandfather and my father encouraged me to drive tractors from a young age and. They all started me on cabless tractors because that's the way they started. So I spent many a cold morning on a cabless tractor and many a hot day with the wind in my face and the dust in my nose. And it really kind of makes you appreciate it and be able to understand what you're putting your employees through when it's tough. And so being able to expand our business and actually be able to move more into cab tractors and air conditioning in this southwest desert, I mean, it's, it's tough during the summer. It's tough any time of year when it gets hot. So really trying to find ways to care for your employees that uh, you want to convey the message to them in so many ways that you care. Uh, one summer we had picked up enough custom work um, that kind of blew our minds. We thought, wow, this is a really great opportunity. Now how are we going to get it done? So we started to try to find ways to rig up some of our older tractors with lighting. And um, you know, it's funny how you start realizing that a lot of your vehicles actually didn't have adequate lighting and didn't have adequate ways of being able to drive at night, tail lights. And once we purchased a tractor, um, that was probably four or five years newer than most of the other ones and it came with a lot of lights on it. We thought, wow, apparently we didn't have lights on these other tractors. So we started going out to the local parts stores down the road, just sending my mechanic out saying, hey, go buy some lights and uh, throw them on there, would you? And uh, pretty excited to get out there that evening to watch them work. And it's kind of disappointing when you realize that uh, technically it's light. I can see the machine, but I don't think it's really helping him any. So um, I would say once we were able to start expanding our business into um, needing to uh, stack hay at night, rake or bale hay at night. Um, it's crucial to be able to see what we're doing. I was talking to a friend of mine at a parts counter in a tractor store and uh, asking him about lights. I said, I'd really, I've got some ingenious ideas. And he said, well, you're not the first one to think about this. Put them on the back of your baler, adding them on top of your bell wagons, on your tractors. It's got to be able to operate when we need it, how we need it to. So I would say that one of the first things that really caught my attention was going through the catalog with Rigid Industries and actually being overwhelmed at first because I wasn't just walking into a parts store and grabbing the one light that they had on the shelf and, and hooking it up to my truck or my tractor. Rigid Industries has basically revolutionized what we're able to do and operate on our farm. We're able to run at night, we're able to be more efficient, we're able to bale hay when we need it to be baled, we're able to rake hay at night, which we never raked hay at night. We're able to keep running our bale wagons at night, um, we can spray a field more efficiently now because we can see each nozzle and knowing that um, we're not messing up on a pass. It's uh, been pretty awesome. Guys are always asking about new equipment and, and how they're able to manage bailing at night and, and working at night. And uh, when a guy kept asking me, how do you guys keep bailing at night? I said, we're running rigid. My rigid lights turn night into day on the farm.